Hello everybody. So what I'm going to do now is um, using Apache 2 on Ubuntu, I'm going to add a certificate. So we have to first uh, generate our keys and generate the um, certificate signing request and then sign it. So we're going to self-sign it. Normally what we would do is uh, with the CSR or certificate signing request, we would give that to a uh, certificate authority, a well-known certificate authority. It would sign it, give it back to us, and then we'd use it. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We don't actually have a domain. Uh, I'm going to just sign it myself and use it in an Apache 2 site. So let's get going with this. So here's the command. What I'm doing is I'm using OpenSSL. That, of course, has to be installed. Um, and it's a new request. And what I'm doing is I'm using an R, uh, the RSA encryption algorithm and a 2048-bit key. And the, out, the key is going to go into Muppet's key, and uh, my certificate signing request is in Muppet's CSR. So let's give this a go. So now first thing I need is my country name, Canada, Quebec, Montreal. I guess I should say uh, Muppets Inc., but uh, Organization CS Department, and the common name. So all of this is going into the CSR and as part of the key hash, but we don't really need to... This, of course, should be valid. Mine is not. And I'm not going to give it a password. I don't want to have to enter a password every time I start up my system. And no optional country company name. So as you can see here I have the two files and it the system recognizes one as a PEM certificate request. So PEM stands for privacy enhanced mail, it goes way back. Uh, essentially it's a, a valid certificate request that we could give to any certificate authority. It's, it's completely valid. And of course we have the key. Um, so let's have a look at what we've got. So there's my certificate request, and let's have a look at the key. Of course, it's illegible to us, illegible. So here we have uh, begin and end private key, begin and end certificate request. So it's not a certificate, it's just a request. So now, as I said, we could give this to a certificate authority, but since I am not going to do that, I don't have a valid domain and yada, 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 but there's a lot of reasons. But So what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to sign it myself. So as you can see here, I've, I've uh, pasted in the command. We're again, we're using OpenSSL. The X509 is the standard for creating certificates, and this one will expire in 365 days. So I'm using my signing request here, my CSR, and I'm signing it with my own key. So this is where, um, when you give it to your certificate authority, they would sign it with their key. So we're signing it with our own private key. So it's like um, writing a, a letter vouching for yourself and signing it with your own name. Um, but this is, it's still a valid certificate, it'll still work in terms of uh, encryption, it's just no one will trust it. So this is the kind of thing that we would do if we want to have an internal certificate and then we would uh, assign our, uh, apply ourselves to all of the browsers that are going to use it as a valid authority. But in this case, um, this is just for a testing and internal, so I want it to encrypt, but I, I'm not really worried about vouching for myself. So if I now hit enter on this, whoops, let's see if I can do that. So it used all the information that was in my signing request, and you can see here I have all of my files. So what, notice we have the request, it recognized this one as a request, and it recognized the new one as actually being a certificate. So now let's, um, oops, don't want to remove it, so now I have my certificate. So the certificate is what I have to give to my web server. So normally, as I said, what would happen is I would get this back from the signing authority, but since I'm not using a signing authority and I signed it myself, sorry, a certificate authority, since I'm not using them and I signed it myself, I'm going to use it in my Apache configuration. So now what I need to do, I'm going to have to manipulate the server root configuration of my Apache server, so I need to work as um, as a privileged user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sudo and become root for a short period of time. Oops, wrong password. So now what I want to do is I want to go into Etsy, Apache 2, my, my server root, and see what's there. So here what I have, and most Apache servers will have this, is um, 
So you did the, if you did my exercise on uh, virtual host, you'll have seen this before, but we're going to create a virtual host that is, uh, uses encrypted traffic, so that uses this cert certificate. So the first thing I need to do is create a directory, and I'm just going to use SSL. So the s Apache server has to read the certificate. So I want it to be secure, and the, the place where all of the configuration for the Apache server is, is in server root, Etsy Apache 2. So I'm going to make a subdirectory in there. So I made my directory SSL2, sorry, SSL, and now I want to copy in my certificates. So I know where my certificates are. Home, Sue. So I'm going to put the cert in here and the key. I'm going to need the key also. I meant to do that for SSL. Oops, I put them in the wrong spot. As you can see, I wasn't watching where I was going. I should have put SSL in there. So now I've got them in, in this directory. I need to move them to my SSL directory. Okay. So never make assumptions. Always check. There we go. So they're in the right spot now. And if I do a file on them, I see I have my, uh, well, it says it's ASCII text. It's really uh, a key and I have my certificate file. So they're all set up fine, but now I have to tell the Apache server to use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that virtual host. And by default, most Apache servers will give you a configuration file. And if you remember, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of information in here that actually can be quite useful to you. But in this case, what I've done is I've already set up the Muppets with the valid information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a backup of this. I'm going to put it in my home directory. So now I've taken a backup copy and I'm going to copy in my Muppets, which I've already um, configured for you. And I'm going to rename it. Well, technically I yeah, I'm going to I'm going to leave it as MuppetsSSL.com because right now it's in sites available. It's not it's it's available but it's not um, not actually being used. So let's have a look at it. Or let's do a diff versus my backup copy. So as you can see, what I've done is I've changed the document root. So all of the content for this virtual server will be in HTTPS. So I'm going to have to cre I create that directory, which I did already. And this was the, the default, so the old one, the original one. I want, I want to have log files, so I've called this one error 443. I find it's easy to use the ports, just so I know what's going on right away. This is the original, and then I have my certificate file, so I'm going to have to change this. So there's my server root, and notice my virtual host is listening on port 443, so that's the default, and it has to use this module. If this module is not available, this virtual host will not be available. So if I go down here, I have my error log, and instead of combined, well, let's let's do the certs first. So what I have here is Muppets, CRT, that's my cert file, and here I have um, Muppets key. Now let's go back up here. So here I have for my logging, my custom log, I'm using combined. So let's see what that means. I'm going to now save this, right quit. Oops. You remember this uh, from your logging uh, lab reading. So log format is the directive that determines what actually goes into the lab. Sorry, into the log, not the lab. Um, and as you can see, we have a bunch of them, and they ha all have names. So we have agent, refer, common, combined, vhost, combined. So um, we're using, in here, we're using refer, which is down here. In here, we're using user agent, which is, uh, sorry, not user agent. I oh, know these are two different things. Anyway, let's... Uh, so refer, these are environment variables, and some of these determine, these are different values, different data that's um, generated by the server, and we can log with it. So instead of com combined, what I want to use, I want to use vhost combined. So this is the one I'm going to use for my log format. Notice the default was combined. Well, not default, but that was what was put in there but in the example. We're going to use vhost combined. So let's go back into there. So now instead of combined, I want vhost combined. 
I think it's singular. I'm going to have to check that. So I'm saying, okay, log v host combined. So log all of that information there. Let's let's save it. Yeah, okay, so it's singular. Okay, <clears throat> so now I have um, I have changed the document root in there. I changed the log files. I, I added the certificate and the key, and I think that's everything I need in there. So now what I need to do is uh, let's let's try testing my config. Well, let's do a diff. Why don't we do a diff? Okay, so we've got HTTPS, H, that's, so this is the new one, the old one, or the original, the new one, the original, the new one, Muppet cert, Muppet's key, and the original. Okay, so now we'll test it. So it says that my, so because I was playing around with the DNS, it says it can't reliably determine uh, my host name, and I'm just going to leave that for now. So my host name is valid, but I haven't configured it, so I'm just going to leave it for now. So now what I want to do is I need to enable SSL. So there's this fancy, there's this fancy um, module disable for Apache 2. So if I want to add something or disable something, I can just do that. So instead of, of editing config files, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it. A2 EN mod SSL. So um, I had already done this, so it's telling me it's already enabled, which is great. So it's already enabled. If you're newly doing it, you won't see enabled. So that what that does is it makes sure that the here where I say mod SSL, that's going to be available to me. So now what I want to do is I want to restart Apache. So let's do that. And again, since I've been running as root this whole time, It's been fine, okay. So what I want to do is this con control. So the nice thing about Apache is that I don't have to completely shut it down. I can just say, okay, reread your config. There we go. It looks like it's uh, available. It's great, it's ready. So let's see what Netstat says. So it's listening on port 443, it's listening on port 80, the original, and because I, I haven't implemented the other two ports, it's listening on the one that I did for the demo, which is 8675. But Apache 2 is now listening. So now what we want to do is I'm going to test it via a browser. So I'm going to pull my browser over. Give me a sec. So here's my browser, and notice I've typed in HTTPS, and there's my IP address, so let's give it a shot can't provide secure connection. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so there's an error. I've made an error somewhere. So let's give it a shot. Okay, so I figured out what the problem was. I didn't want to uh, spend hours on, on uh, recording that, but so it says it can't provide a secure connection. And I did notice that uh, when I do netstat, it's listening on port 443. So if I look into my ports file, here I have 80.8.7.6.5, and if SSL is available, 4.4.3. So it was listening, but I forgot something. There are two directories. Remember, there's sites available, which means things that I can use, and then there's sites enabled. So I messed up the vhosts. So in sites enabled, I have links to those two files. If I do a long listing the two files that are in sites available, but what I also want to implement is my Muppets file. Sorry, my Muppets virtual host. So what I need to do is go into sites available, sorry, sites enabled, and put a link to the Muppets file. So ln dot dot slash sites available. I guess I'm going to call it, uh, oh well, it's, it's Muppets. And what do I want to call it? Maybe I will call it 000, zero, zero Muppets. Conf. And I'll make sure that it's a soft link. And there we have my uh, my Muppets conf. So I was listening and there but there was nobody home. So now what I need to do is I need to 
reload this. There we go. Let's do a system control status. And OK, seems to be good. And then net stat. So, you know, you can have certain things going, but it doesn't always mean everything is working. So let's try it one more time. Go back to my browser. And of course, I have to have my, um, so again, I'm doing this. And it says not secure. So what it's saying is um, my connection's not private. So I know that now I'm actually being connected. And it says cert authority invalid. So that's that makes sense because I am the authority. And here it's showing me the cert information. So since I created that cert, I know it's OK. I'm going to let it go. And um, I created it today and expires in a year. And there's the certificate itself. So what I want to do is um, proceed to it. It's unsafe. It's not really unsafe. And there I get my content. So one thing I didn't show you was that even though I'd created that HTTPS directory, I put that, that so that was my document root. I'd already created it. And here's my index HTML that I put in there. So I know that that's working. And if we have a quick, take a quick look at this. I don't want this to be too much longer. Um, you see here, it says it's not secure because it's self-signed, but I do still have the certificate. So what this means is it's, it's not trusted. And what I can do is um, I can add it to the browser if I want to be, if I want to trust it. So it's still encrypting, but the, the trust component I is not there. So I can't validate that I am who I am with this browser until I add myself. So that's it. We've added our, uh, oh, and let's take a quick look at the log files. So here you have, let's see, tail error 443 log. So it's telling me the certificate doesn't include an ID that matches the server name. So it's allowing me to do it, so I don't have strict security. So there's, there's a, a connection between uh, domain information and security information, but we're kind of av avoiding it here. So technically what I should do is I should use the server name teacher.campbell.ca and put that in the certificate. Or I could use the server name, since I put in the certificate, I could use the certificate name www.muppets.ca. If I put that, I wouldn't get this warning. But notice it's a warning, so it's allowing me to do it. Let's look at the access log. So this is the access that I've just done. So again, this is a warning, so it's not severe. But if I wanted to get rid of that warning, what I could do is I could use the same name that I use in the certificate. So www.muppets.ca, which is normally what I would do. But I'm kind of dumbing it all up here. Anyway, so now I have a fully functioning server, and I still also have the other things running. I didn't stop anything, so I should have 10, 172, 11, uh, 136. So there's my main page. I should also have my VM, sorry, my virtual host, 10, which is running on 8765. So that's taking a bit. Uh, did I do it? Let's see. I may have, may have made some changes to my system. I can't remember. But anyway, they should all still be available. There we go. So that's... Even though it says not secure, it's actually being encrypted. So remember, certificate, uh, sorry, the whole PKI really has to do not just with um, encryption, but it also has to do with authentication of the user. And there's the message digest. So this is just one part of it that's not valid, the certificate. But it will, it's because it, it's, it's not part of the public key infrastructure. Anyway, there we go. That's a complete setup.